Yo, shout out to the most high. It's always a high see when we in our lower status. LDs, also known Lawrence the One, for another episode I need to know on my special guest. Introduce yourself, G. Yeah, yeah, this your boy Love Ranch. I'm here. I'm chilling. Where the ladies at? Okay, okay. Well, <laughs> it ain't none in the studio right now, but I'm sure they watching. You feel me? Hey, and they do watch. Good. <laughs> For sure. So this is what I always ask all my guests first. You know what I'm saying? How did you get your name Love Rance? Um, well, Rance is my government name. And uh back in like back in the day when uh, Twitter was first getting like popping, um uh I had a name from AIM from Psychics. It was Gotta Love Rants. I felt like that was hella long. So I was like, let me shorten it down for Twitter, uh, so people can remember it. So I just went with Love Rance and it was actually uh it was just supposed to be just like my little party throwing promoter name. And then I started rapping and it just, it just stuck. So you was throwing parties and shit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you yeah. look like somebody in college that was throwing <laughs> parties and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. No, I was uh, sure, I was throwing parties in high school. And, like, and of course, it went into college. But yeah, yeah, I started throwing parties in high school. So it did start off in somebody's basement. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. the dope shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When motherfuckers get drunk off that punch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But what I, what I was going to say, where did you actually grow up at? Let's talk about your childhood real quick. Childhood, I stayed, um, well, I was born in the city. Okay. Then I moved to Richmond uh, around junior high. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, and then, like, from there, I was, like, back and forth. Like, I was still going to church in the city. But I was just living in Richmond and going to school in Richmond. Dope, dope, dope. Okay, so you were part of HBK, right? Uh, for a moment in time, like we was like we was affiliated. Like um, I was like we all went to the same school, so, high school or junior high? Uh, college. College. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it was all like everybody was just working on music. So um, there was a lot of people that were uh, around same time I was around that wasn't initially in the group. Like, you feel me? They were just around. So I was like one of the people that were around. How did y'all all get hooked up though? School. School. School and like everybody just knowing somebody that knew somebody else. Like it's just like a puzzle. Like gotcha. Uh, like um yeah, because like basically we was all just chilling in college. Like yeah. the little steps or whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it just kinda blossomed from there. And then like I said, like everybody had some kind of relationships with each other. Like, Is that where your music career started? Um, nah, I started rapping at like um fifteen, sixteen. Mm -hmm. And um it literally was just on some like Telling my big bro, hey yo, I want to do music. And he was like, all right, whatever. And then he um he picked me up one day. He was, like, I'm gonna take you to the studio. Was it a surprise? Yeah, it was a big surprise. Big surprise. Sure. Shout out to Big Bro, yeah, man. Yeah. That's some real shit. He tried to cultivate the seed and yeah. it worked. It worked, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh so then like I went in there, knocked out a record. It was a uh, we wrapped off a of, um uh, Cassidy Hotel. Okay. That was the first song like, I rapped off of. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. And was that getting noise in the streets? Uh, I got noise in my school. <laughs> That's dope enough. Yeah, yeah, I got noise in my school. Uh, basically, because I just recorded it uh, right before prom. And I was just like, I just wanted to just have a song just to like play while we riding a prom or just riding around during the weekend. So yeah. um, that's how I like, you know, that's how I got pretty much popping around in my school. Did they play it at the prom? No. Okay, okay. No, nah, they didn't. It was hating. Okay. <laughs> so what was the first big record that gave you the inspiration or the first record that gave you the inspiration to be like, you know what, I could do this? Um, it was this record called Midnight Love. Um, it's back in MySpace days. Um, I, I dropped it. It was uh, featuring uh, J-Rock from uh, from the city. My boy uh, J-Ant and uh, Dame from uh, this group called The Diligence. And oh. um, I put it out. You know, it was like, you know, just a slow record. You know, just vibing. And I knew it was going somewhere when girls from other schools started to tell me about it or ask me about it. Like, yeah. just a, or they ask me like, oh, who you talking about when you say this? Or like, it was like inquiring about certain lines. Yeah. So I was like, oh, y'all been listening. But yeah. it was like at other schools now, not just at mine. So that's when I knew like, oh, like, okay, I can, I can do something with this. I can do something with some rap. So that was like the first time. And what year at this point is this into your career when you laid that? Like my first year, so yeah, first year. So you was getting that buzz when you first came out. Yeah, yeah, because cause basically, uh, I didn't cuss in my first raps. Like I did, like my whole first mixtape, I didn't cuss at all. Okay. So I used to get like, I used to slide past like with parents and other like people because they were like, oh, who's this? He doesn't cuss. So you know, yeah. So let it ride. So um, yeah. So that first year, um, and rapping off other people's beats, of course, yeah, you know, yeah. that was popular. So um, 
that kind of the first year was kind of big, like you know, just getting my feet wet in the game, and also just rapping. Just. And who has been your biggest motivator through all this? Ooh, um, my biggest motivator, shit, myself. Okay, you feel me? Because that's the person I gotta look at every day. I know that's right. You feel me? So yeah, me. Okay, now. You got the song, Beat the Pussy Up. <laughs> you know, he didn't, uh, 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 said he went to church and didn't cuss. Now, when did you start uh, uh, beating the pussy up now? Come on now, that's what I want to get into. <laughs> no, it's so, it's so, it's so funny because um, cause like it, it was around, it was like because it was college. Yeah. And uh, basically what was going on was I was throwing parties. And I was already like three, four years in the game, like as far as throwing parties. And... Uh, like that was kind of like my image, like the party guy. Like yeah. I was like, hey, like any party, I'm either there dancing, having a good time, or I'm throwing the event. So yeah, basically I was that was just my uh, my little like lifestyle. You feel me? I was like going to school, throwing the parties, and of course you know women came with that. You know yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so I was trying to make the connection. You know, yeah, hella like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, of course, women came with that. And then, of course, you know, just hanging around other MCs and trying to figure out your niche. Yeah. You know, I know, like, you know, this around the time, like, everybody was mobbing. Like, everybody was, mob music was heavy in rotation. So it's like, you know, we got to talk about something different. You yeah. feel me? We got we to talk about something that, you know, of course, we about and that we like to do every damn day. And it was like, okay, you know, certain cats was rapping about this, certain cats were rapping about that. Me, I was like, well, I'm talking about the bitches. That's yeah, what I'm yeah. About like you feel me? And it was like okay, boom. Then the, uh, recorded the record. Recorded a few records also that sounded like similar to that, like party uh, pertaining to women. You know all the sex shit and all that stuff. So that became the image overall. So yeah, beat the pussy. <laughs> That's hella funny. Ain't that the name of it? Yeah, well, it's yeah. called Up, right? It's called Up, but it's kind of funny because I first put it up on YouTube as a Up. And it got hella plays, but it wasn't like moving as fast. And then like six, maybe eight months later, I put it up again on YouTube as Beat the Pussy Up. Yeah. And that shit just yeah. took off. That's when it took off, when I changed the name on yeah. YouTube. You know, but of course you couldn't go to the radio station or go to MTV or anywhere and be like, yo, this is my record, Beat the Pussy Up. Come on. That's not, <laughs> sorry, sir, that's not getting no burn. So yeah. it, it was kind of funny, you know, I named it up and ironically, they dropped that movie, the cartoon movie, up around the same time it hit like the nation. So kind of like, okay, kind of like, kind of went smooth with a few people. So definitely. So who made the beat on that? Uh, I am Sue. I am Sue. Yeah, yeah. Is he on that record too? Yeah, he's the first verse. In, okay. In, in, in the hook. Okay, so is it true that when it was time to perform it, he couldn't perform it? Um, it just depends on where we was at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause yeah, I know yeah. that he comes like he's black excellence. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think his his mother is a teacher, if I remember remember correct. correct. And his grandfather, shout out to my nigga Susie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I am Susie. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But his grandfather put a uh, element on the periodic table. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I know that he comes from like a prestigious background. So how is that performing the song? And he's like, man, you know, I can't fuck with that tonight. Uh, I mean, you know, it's, I mean, it is what it is. Like, yeah. you feel me? Like, I understand it. Like, you know, uh, it's funny because like, uh, even when I first like met him, I was uh, throwing a party in Oakland and uh, he was with a group. Um, damn, 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 whatever. Go Getters. That was the name of the group. Um, and uh, the first time I even like met him, I had to talk to his mom to let her know it was cool to come to the show. Like, okay. You feel me? Because you know, it's you know, it's Oakland, you know, it's the early two thousands, it's high fee, you know, every you know how you know how it is. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's good. Like you feel me? But then at that at that point, at, from there, I was like, okay, you know, it comes from a, a good family. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. So but when it comes to performing that record, like, you know, I understood sometimes you couldn't, sometimes you could. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, but you know, it's still my record, so I had to push forward, you know. Yeah. So, so Tell me about the record. How big did the record get? Shit, hella big. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know how to measure it. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, I, I like to tell people sometimes, um, shit, that record brought the bay back. It did. Like, it did. Me? I remember, I remember, uh, I just remember hearing that shit and all the motorcycles and shit <laughs> like that. What, what month did you drop that in? Ooh, 
technically are like no when, when this is what i want to say the streets got a hold of it when <laughs> the streets got a hold of it and that shit pinnacle eyes pinnacle mean mm-hmm. at the top of the highest point nigga yeah. but no <laughs> I, I, but see but see i gotta answer that question in two different parts because uh, my pinnacle happened twice okay because my pinnacle happened here where i'm like I rose in the Bay, and it was like the hottest record in the Bay for a year. Yeah. And then the next year is when the nation got a hold of it. Yeah. You feel me? So I had two different pinnacles. That's you right. You know what I'm saying? In a year, in a, I always tell people, the song came out technically in 2010. You feel me? The streets got a hold of it in 2011. The world got it in 2012. Damn, you had a long-ass wave. Man, overnight celebrity, man. Shit. Check this out, <laughs> man. So, so didn't he go platinum? Yeah. We might be we might be like two or three times platinum now because of streams, but yeah, we definitely platinum. Damn. Yeah. So so talk about some of the the upside on that. Like, what was some of the benefits? Like, did they who did you get signed with after that? Who was reaching out to you? Uh, I had three uh three major labels uh, reaching out, like sending contracts and stuff. But I ended up uh, signing to Interscope. Interscope. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, under uh, Interscope Universal. Um, and basically, it was I just felt comfortable. Like you know, it was it was out here, uh, Atlantic. You know, they hit me up, but it's like I gotta always go to Atlanta. If I you know, everyone or go to New York if I ever want to conversate with them. Yeah. So you know, Interscope is you know West Coast. You know. Yeah. I met Jimmy Iovine. So, How know, was that? Man, that was so player. Yeah. Like we pulled up to his crib. This man got like fifty security guards, dogs everywhere. I'm like, yo, this is. Some real big time stuff right here. We in the hills. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We sat there, chopped it up for an hour or so, you know. And you know, Did I, he give you some dough right then and there? No. Nah, hell no. Okay. <laughs> he, gave, he gave me a book. He gave me a book actually called uh, Kulo. Okay. Yeah, it was a, a book full of asses from like, they, 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 they ran around the nation taking pictures of like certain athletes and stuff like that. Like they had like Serena Williams in there and shit. But like, okay. But like that, that's the first thing he gave me was a book. Yeah, a book of asses, ain't it? A book of asses, but you know. <laughs> I guess he did want you to get inner scope. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you did that. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. So wasn't it some on the uh, word on the streets is that did you have a fallout with some of the members in like HBK over that record? Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um basically it was like a misunderstanding, you feel me? Um yeah. it was basically between me and Sue, like we had, we just didn't like communicate. Like, you feel me? We should have just hollered at each other. But, you know, um, you know how it is when uh two people don't talk. Everybody else gets to say whatever they want. You feel Definitely. Me? So not not even people that was in the group, just people around yeah, me yeah. and the group. You feel me? That had nothing to do with the music. You know what I'm saying? So you know everybody was saying whatever they wanted, but. You know, now we good though. You definitely, know, definitely. Yeah. Sue was a. You know what I like about him though? He's a very approachable and sensible type person. Yeah, yeah. You know. Hell yeah. You know, I thought I thought it was really dope that you know he's he's made a lot of good music since that. You know, and that mm-hmm. takes a lot of um, resilience. Mm-hmm. You know, for whatever reason, to feel like you could do that again. Yeah. You know, because sometimes people don't feel like they could do that in, and it might be like, man, this is my one big break or something. Yeah. Now, nah, man, I tell people all the time, man, like. You can do it. If you can do it once, you can do it twice. Man. Okay. Well, All you right. did it twice. Man, I'm trying to do it a third time right now. That's why I'm I'm trying to figure that out right now. So you know. I want to know this. Yeah, yeah. Where were you at mm-hmm. or how did it come about when the G unit boss got on that song? Where the fuck did you find 50 or where did he find you? Uh <laughs> <laughs> no, basically shit. Um 50 was trying to sign me at first. Okay, and, and then like uh, I was just I was you know reading over the shit, and I was just like, man, at, at the time it was early, it was early in the whole wave of up, and I was like, I have people in my corner saying keep going independent, so I like you know I was like, all right, let's go independent. So I, I kept on going for a few more months, but then I you know I started to realize like okay, this independent stuff is great, but this record needs to be bigger than this, and I yeah. understood that a label. Could push a button and just send it over the over the moon. So, you know, it was like six six months to a year after that contract came across my table. That's when I was like, okay, let me just ink a deal with Interscope. But um, that's how Fifty Cent ended up getting on the track because Interscope reached out to him after signing. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's how it came full circle. Yeah. Oh so, yeah. So ended up working out, man. It ended up definitely. Working out, so. 
So did he send the contract before he got on it or you got on it first and be like, you no. know what, I like this guy? No, he sent the contract first. Because he heard the song like when the Bay heard the song, like in 2011. That's okay. When, that's when he heard the song. Okay. And so, uh, you know, people, you know, oh, da, 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 50, you know, he want to he wanna sign you. I was like, okay, well, you know, what's up? Like, you know, that's when the contract came through. And then, you know, that's when I had people like, no, don't sign it just yet. Like, keep keeping your independent money, so... If you don't mind me asking, what did the contract look like? Like, what was the stipulations? Uh, pff, man, I can't even remember. It's been so damn long. I just remember it like saying that he could remix the record whenever. So I was like, okay, what the hell does that mean? Like, yeah. you can remix it whenever. Like, it kind of sounded like he could take the record. Yeah, it sounded like he was trying to buy it off of you. Exactly. So, yeah. I didn't. I was like, eh, I'm good. Like, so, so, was the contract for an album deal or was it just for the song? The song. Oh, so he didn't want to sign you as an artist? No. He just wanted to buy the song. Yeah. But how they came off it was like, oh, they want to sign you. That's oh, the, that's the first thing I heard. Oh, they want to sign you. And of course, you know, I'm getting offers from other people already at this moment. You feel me? So it's not like a, this is the first contract or first offer I get. Yeah, this is like the third or fourth one. So it's like, okay, let me hear it. Like you know, and then when you, of course you read it, it's like, what? Like this thing? I'm not about to get a G you in the chain. Yeah. <laughs> so now nah, I was like, let me pass. Let me pass on this. So, so were other people trying to sit there and give you a sign? Is that a single deal? Uh, if you if you want to use the terminology, yes. Okay, so were other people with the other contract single deals as well? No. They were trying to sign you. They were trying to sign. Oh, I did. Well, I was signing Interscope. I signed as an artist and a songwriter. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So, I okay. signed for an album, uh, album deal with Interscope. Yeah. So, you went platinum one time. Mm -hmm. Is there any gold records other than up? Uh, Go and get it. Go and get it? Yeah, well, Mario. Damn, like that. Did, was you on the record? Yeah, it's my record. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> this motherfucker, I know. man. <laughs> I know. Hey, look. I know. I know. This is yeah. how you be happy when you hear a motherfucker. <laughs> You got they motherfucking ass, you know. <laughs> you know, it's so funny because people be like, "Wait a minute, that did what?" I'm like, "Yeah, that shit yeah. went gold. Like no radio spins, no, no nothing. It was just straight off the mixtape. Did a video for it, gave it to the people, and the people they took it. You know so I, mean? I was cussing up a storm on that record too. So what do you think as an artist? You know what I'm saying? Because I like to watch comic books and shit like that, and everybody got a superpower. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what is your superpower in this shit? Ooh, um. Man, I guess making the, making the people dance. I make you dance. Like, yeah. You feel me? Like, I like energy. I like to dance. So, you know, even if it's a slow jam record, I'm still dancing. So I, I think that's that's my that's my power. Like, even if even if we at a wedding, if we at church, if we at block party, wherever wherever I pull up to, people already know. Oh, it's a party. We yeah. About to, we about to dance tonight. Yeah. You feel me? So that's I think that's my superpower. Dope, yeah. dope. Speaking of church, uh -huh. have you ever had to perform up when somebody in the church or was around, or did you have to answer to anybody from the congregation? Uh, yeah, <laughs> multiple congregations actually, uh, because uh, I like you know I was kind of like doing my own thing. And I, uh, when I popped back up at my mom's church, they was like, "Oh." Ah! Let me holla at you. <laughs> so, you know, I had to, I got it from them. And then, uh, of course, my grandma's church. And then uh, I went to uh, one of my friend's church. And then uh, one of the kids that was on the keyboard, he started playing up. And I was just like, oh, man. Oh, wow. Oh, man. But it was kind of like, it was kind of subtle. It wasn't like one of those, like, he just didn't sit there the whole two minutes or a minute long playing the beat. It was like kind of like. I knew what it was. You feel me? And he looked at me. Was, <laughs> that might have been the Lord's I fingers. Like, I was like, oh, damn. Because <laughs> nah, it's funny because some dude back in the day, he had a uh, I Lift Jesus Up song. He remixed Up. Yeah. Yeah, I, I Lift Jesus Up. And I'm like, you know, I Lift Jesus Up too, but this ain't the type of record that you need to be remixing to make it yeah. sound like a gospel record. Yeah. Because, like, you know, I, I already know how people thoughts is. If I'm in church and I hear this beat, I'm I'm my person initially thinking of the Lord. I'm thinking, oh, beat the oh, yeah, yeah. Now I'm in church though. I ain't supposed to be thinking like that. So yeah, I be like, I tell people, hey, yo, be cool off that. Like, don't mix those two together. So so when you're in the hot seat, when you're in the hot seat, yeah, yeah. 
at church, right? How do you explain yourself? I'm human. We all do it. That's how you got here. How your kids get here? Okay. Oh, you you married to who? Oh, why y'all married? What what goes on in your marriage? Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, so they never uh, tried to pop that. Uh, yeah, but I'm married. You ain't. Uh, oh man. Oh yeah. One one tried to do it. And I'm like, oh, so you didn't get it before? Ma- oh, okay. Ooh. Oh, okay. Like you know, I, I tell everybody, I can talk about drugs. I can talk about shooting people. I can talk about robbing people if you want. Like, I mean, yeah, that's what you want. Like, yeah. But that doesn't that doesn't move me. Like, yeah. it doesn't move the people. Like, you know, yeah. what I'm saying the people, the people want to have fun. They want to dance. They want to hear some shit that, like, I tell people that's steroids. That song was steroids for guys. Like, you feel me? They 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 heard that song before the club, during the club. And, Beat, I, I know I can beat the pussy up. Yeah, yeah. I can do that. Like, yeah. Do that. You feel me? I'm, I'd rather, I'd rather gas, you know, gas everybody. You feel me? Live your life. Do your thing and try to be all, you know, something that I'm not. Yeah. You feel me? So you got to respect me for who the fuck I am. Yeah. Like, you feel me? And if you can't, which some people, they be like, oh, you know. If you can't, then fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? Like, hey, I'm not here to please you. Yeah. I'm here to praise the Lord in this church. Yeah. I know that's right. <laughs> you feel me? So I don't even be. I, it used to bother me, but that shit don't even bother me no more. I just be like, yeah. So if the dude, you know what I'm saying, did the Jesus song, mm-hmm. you know. Oh, wow. Was that church? You no, know I'm saying oh, like, like, no, no. The person, <laughs> the person that redid it. Uh-huh. If he wanted you to get on that, say like the record went diamond, would you have got on that? No. Okay. No, I, that's that's just. I mean, I'm gonna take my pay cut because you know that is my song still. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna have to talk about that. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> you know, but nah, I'm good. Was you and Sue? Was that a fifty-fifty split, like a production deal? Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Like with the song? Like, like with the song? Like was it half your? Not fifty. Uh, I am Sue. Was it was it half your song and half his? No, nah, it was all my song. Gotcha. Yeah, and then um, of course it's all him as far as production goes. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. As far as like yeah, I'm saying like when the check come, dude, is he? Getting half like oh, or, or oh yeah, he get well. It's a it's a it depending on what song is played because of course it's the splits are different with the Fifty Cent version than the uh, original version. Yeah, the original version has to be split three ways. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it depends on what version you're listening to. But gotcha. Yeah, but yeah. And when you was on Interscope, you did an album over there. No, I recorded an album, but I never dropped it. Oh, what happened with that? Uh shit, it became a mixtape, and then that's where Gone Get It got got put on. And you know that shit, but um, but yeah, that 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 shit. Um, it was supposed to be an album, ended up being a mixtape. Try to build more buzz for a second single. Yeah, and build more buzz, got the second single, but you know that that wasn't what they were projected. Thinking. Yeah, so it's like, all right, back to the drawing board. But but back, exactly back but, to. The- <laughs> but I gotta ask you a question. You said it went go. It went go. So they were expecting more from you than that. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. I, I, I mean, I, I can't get mad at him. I mean, shoot. You expect platinum again? Hey, I, I didn't deliver. Yeah. You feel me? So. I've, get- I've actually heard that because MC Hammer said one of the hardest things that he ever did was put out You Can't Touch This to try to follow that shit up. I, what man. the fuck is beat? Look, You Can't Touch This can't even touch You Can't Touch This. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, that shit real. was everywhere. That's real. That's real. You know, and I also say that it's all about timing and shit like that. Mm-hmm. You know what event actually catapulted You Can't Touch This? What? The Battle of the Bay. Sporting events actually make motherfucking oh, music. Oh, yeah. I mean, okay, in the video, yeah. he got the... The, the the A's with the San Francisco Giants split. He's wearing this shit in the motherfucking uh, video. Yeah, I damn I remember that. What yeah. is the what is America's favorite pastime sport? Baseball. And it's in the Bay. Mm-hmm. And then a motherfucker earthquake happens. My birthday. Hey. Okay. Okay. You know yeah, I really yeah. wasn't getting too much shit anyway, but hey, <laughs> I lived through it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's real. Damn, no, nah, I never even thought about that. I never, you know, I was, I was a baby around there. Yeah. So, but damn, that's that's crazy to hear and think about now. Like, yeah. that makes sense. Like, yeah. Like, I'm gonna tell you who else did it. When the Warriors won the championship, who had a song for that? C40. That shit. Uh, yep. Nope. Mm-hmm. That shit is bigger than the one on his motherfucking album. That's true. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. 
He's having the same motherfucking flow on the choices on his album, mm -hmm. but when it's a warrior, yeah, it's different, whole different monster. Because the thing about hits and shit like that is that when you attach him to a particular something, that's when the it power comes. Mm -hmm. I'm about to ask you this throwback question, right? Mm -hmm. What is the most well-known rap verse of all time? Rapper's Delight? No, but people normally say that in the top five. That is in the top five. Okay, so number one rap verse. Oh, come a little bit closer to the mic. Number one rap verse. It's going to fuck you up. Yeah, you're gonna have to tell me this. I don't, yeah, I was I was rapping the light. You ready? Yeah. Well, here is a story all about hell. My life got twisted upside down, and I like to take a minute just to sit right there. I tell you, that shit debuted somewhere what 1990 what two? Mm -hmm. It came on one time a week on Tuesday, right? For like six years straight, so 52 times six, that's already 312, and they even had marathons of this shit. The shit has been on the TV for 30 years. So it's motherfuckers that wasn't even born when it came out that know it now. Damn. I never even thought about that. What's fucking with that? Nothing. People say Will Smith, all the motherfuckers corny and shit like that. Oh, no, nah, I got I got mad respect for Will. Will Smith is tight as fuck in his lane. Yeah. Like, there's a, like, there's tight-ass rappers, and then there's tight-ass rap artists. He's a tight-ass rap artist. Mm -hmm. Nate Dogg is a tight-ass rap artist. Mm -hmm. There's certain motherfuckers that could actually be on both. Like, a nigga like Tupac is a tight rapper and a tight rap artist. Nas is a tight rapper and a rap artist. Mm -hmm. But he's on the rap artist side. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like he make he make just songs and music. Like, yeah. Yeah, because he still got summertime. What's yeah. fucking with that? They play that what one time a day or five times a day every summer across the world. <laughs> every radio station. As soon as the summer hit. Yes. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> Shit like that. Fast. So I want to know something. Mm -hmm. You seen the success with the song Up and shit like that. Talk about the person that you would have thought would have been there supporting, but wasn't there to support, like somebody close to you. Mm. Damn. Who wasn't there? Um, I guess I gotta I guess I gotta go with this ex of mine. She was supposed to be so supportive. Yeah. But she wasn't. That's why she ain't here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. She went down. Yeah, she went, she went down. <laughs> you went up, she went down. She went down. <laughs> but it's, it's 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 funny because, you know, I, I laugh at certain situations, you know, because I, I always step away from certain situations or situations and then just, you know, peep shit and then go, you know, go out it how I do it. But with with that situation, it was like I was starting to warm up and like it was like, okay, I'm getting a little hot and started to act a little funny. And I was like, uh, you know, I'm not liking this right now. You was she me? black? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No disrespect, but I only date black girl. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So, you know what? Because you did, you know what I'm saying, go to church and stuff like this. You know what I'm finding about people that want to box your shine? What's up? <laughs> Is that people are glad when you go to church, but they only want you on the deacon level. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they don't want to fuck with the preacher. And it seemed like when she seen you finna get your church. I was about to get my church. <laughs> she disfellowshipped. She, she's like, I ain't <laughs> feeling it. But you know, it's always, it's funny things that happen, you know, because then she ended up sliding into a DM years later. It was on some, I should have chose you type shit. You know, and it was just like, well, you know, you, you chose up. Yeah. She did choose up. <laughs> <laughs> well, she didn't choose up. She you chose, know what I'm she saying? She chose down. Yeah. yeah. Nah. You know, it's all love, though. You feel me? I, I, I didn't answer that shit back, but that was just like, a, okay. Like, I, I like, confirm. Like, yeah. you know, it's like, oh. Yeah. Now I can move on. And that's when I just started to. Oh, yeah. So I you got roll. closure with that. Yeah. Ben yeah. had closure. Best word, closure. Then, yeah. I, then I got on that road and just like, oh. Did you ever, when you got the platinum record and the gold record, did you ever feel like, you know what, I don't need none of these motherfuckers. I've been doing this shit by myself any motherfucker. Oh, uh, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. Because I, I, I'm like, I'm a team player. Okay. Regardless, like, if I'm playing sports or if I'm, like, just working, like, I'm, I like working with team. Because, you know, the celebration is much better when everybody is a part of it. Like, yeah. not, not the celebration, but the work yeah. that went into it. And then we all celebrate. It's like, yeah, it's not like just everybody celebrating you. 
Like, yeah. you feel me? Because that's what most artists will feel. That, like, everybody just celebrate me. I got a birthday if you want to celebrate me. Yeah. Everything else, let's just get it. You feel me? So. Was you always a solo artist? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was in an R&B group back in high school, though. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? I'm very serious. <laughs> what was they called? Split Decision. Split decision. That sound like a '90s uh, <laughs> R&B group. It sound like they'd be a. That sound like they'd be like intro or something like that. <laughs> it's a little funny because you can't. You, it, it, the name is called Split Decision, so you already knew what happened to the group. Yeah, they split. They split up. <laughs> and we had split decision, so you know. But I, I, I was the first one to go though, because like basically I was just like the the songwriter. Like I wasn't even the singer. Like I can hold a note, but I'm not a singer. Oh, like, okay. Me, like I'm more of the songwriter composing all that shit so that was more of me so but yeah i was in a group i was yeah. in an r&b group so yeah man i'm group aspect but as far as rapping goes i always just been solo like yeah you know who are some of your biggest influence to rap like who do you look up to in this game um ll luda eminem um wayne tupac of course yeah yeah um i'm a big san quinn fan you know what? Shout out to Quinn. I had his sons in here. Man, shout out to him, bro. Shout out to him. His sons is doing their motherfucking thing. He got two of them motherfuckers. They going? One of them is black like him. One of them is light that look like him. You know what I'm saying? He got two sons, and they both rapping. Man, that's yep. crazy. It's funny, though, because the big one was sitting right where you sitting at, right? Uh -huh. And I didn't know that was him. He said, yeah, man, you probably know my pops. I said, who? He said, San Quinn. I said, you know what? Did you used to be chubby when you was about 12 years old? He said, yeah. I said, man, I met you downtown in Jack London with Gary Archer when you was 12 years old. Wow, Gary Archer, the legend. Gary Archer is a motherfucking <laughs> legend. A legend, for surely. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's crazy though. Like, but nah, most people don't know that. Like, I'm, man, big fan. Like, you feel me? Like, uh, he had this record uh, called Butterflies that was like hella like, like going to school for me, it was like hella helpful. You feel me? So yeah. it was like, I always looked at him like, I always like listened to his lyrics and then like, I got to see him perform in the point at the opera house, he did the San Francisco anthem, and it was just like, oh man, it was like. Oh. Did you say you from Frisco? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what is y'all anthem out there? Shit, yeah, I don't know. You know what niggas from Oakland think y'all anthem is? What's up? Don't give me no bammer weed. I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's the most popular record, I guess. You know, what I'm saying yeah. like, you know, you could be. Anybody from anywhere, like you feel me? Even when I went to Colorado Springs, there was I love. Oh, I love the Bay. I, love, I smoke weed. Oh man, da, 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 da. don't give me that bammer weed. It's like it comes. Yeah. It just it just comes with it. You feel me? But you know, I just feel like damn near. I don't, I, I can't say what is the specific anthem besides the San Francisco anthem. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But you know that depends on who you ask, I guess, because some people they're probably in their hoods. They probably be like, no, nah, yeah, this is our anthem. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm going to say my song is the anthem. For sure. <laughs> I mean, it's up there. I would put it, like, I would, like, if I was going to make uh, 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 a motherfucking mix CD, uh -huh. uh, shit that toe shit up from the town, and then I just had to put it, like, in chronological order, mm -hmm. i definitely put that record on there. I appreciate that. Don't do, like, these other cats that be making these bogus-ass lists yeah. and putting me at 9 and 10, and I'd be like, on what universe? On what world? Yeah, yeah. You feel me? What what? What you talking? You know? And you know what's so funny? People try to downgrade it and say it don't sound like no Bay Area song. People that, Bay Area people that are making these lists, they say it's not a Bay Area song. And I'm like, wait a minute. I recorded the song in a Bay Area household with a Bay Area producer with Bay Area girls and Bay Area rap. How Bay Area could you get? Well, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. When you think about Bay Area artists, right? Mm hmm there's only one thing that makes a Bay Area artist a Bay Area artist to me. What's that? They just sound like some shit that you have to get used to. Because if you never heard <laughs> Drew Down walk in the motherfucking room and say, hey, man, I got this new shit, and you play it, you're yeah. like, what the fuck is this? This shit is knocking, but it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. If you never heard Too Short before and he just coming on like that, and the list goes on and on and on and on and on, that's what E-40. Everybody, kick the sneak. Definitely kick, for surely. <laughs> for surely. Like, that's what makes the bass shit different because it's already different, mm -hmm. you know? I was going to ask you this. Do you feel like the bay 
gets a fair shake in the music game or the rap game? No. Why not? Man, it's 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 kind of hard because like, like for so long when I was outside the game, I would always hear people talk about the the crab in the bucket mentality and all that stuff. And it's like, yeah, I see a little bit of that. Um, I see a little bit of like, you feel me? We gotta be more like one as one. We ain't getting that. You feel me? So it's kind of like it's kind of like let's put it into basketball terms. If we if we talking about oh man. L.A. Lakers, that's a good franchise. But how about the Detroit Pistons? What's your first thought of the Detroit Pistons franchise? Ah, man, they got to get their shit together. They got to do this. That's how people feel about the Bay Area. You feel me? Because we going we to funk, we going to do whatever, we going to party amongst ourselves. Yeah. We don't give a fuck about nobody else. But when we trying to elevate it outside the Bay, we got to care about other people. Like, you feel me? We got what the South fucking with, what the East Coast fucking with, what the Midwest, what they, what they talking about. You feel me? And we're so, we in our own bubble. Yeah. You feel me? So when you're in your own bubble and people try to fuck with you, they only going to fuck with that specific artist and then that's it. And it don't go really further than that. And it's like, now you got, but I'm glad like, there's people like G-Eazy. Yeah. There's, there's people like uh, K-Lani. Those people are like getting out and pushing it to a whole nother stratosphere. Yeah. You feel me? So, I mean, I think it's just, it's just growth, but I feel like it, it could happen. Like it could happen, but it has to happen with us first. You feel me? It has to our our empire, our franchise, all this shit has to start here. So people will, we ain't gotta worry about nobody else. That's why Atlanta ain't gotta worry about nobody else. Cause yeah. Atlanta fucked with Atlanta. Yeah. Then they fucked with the South. And it's like the South, they ain't gotta go. They can literally tour from Texas to fucking North Carolina. Yeah. And not go no north or no west and be straight. Yeah, that's, and that's what we can do out here from 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 Portland, Seattle, down to San Diego, out to Arizona. This is all West. You feel me? Well, so, when you think about West Coast hip hop, you know what I'm saying? There really isn't no West Coast hip hop because <laughs> you know it's <laughs> it's really depend on if you ask an LA cat, they be like Dr. Dre and Snoop. You ask a Bay cat, E40 and uh, Two Short, like yeah. Do they yeah, like, sound the same? No. Like who's <laughs> coming out of Utah? Who's coming out of Nevada? Who's coming out of Portland? You know what I'm saying? Who's coming out of the other West Coast states? Because, I mean, the funny thing about it is, is that if they were, like, known people that was actually popping in those other states, mm -hmm. then we could have more of a unification. You know what I'm saying? And tapping in with a motherfucker from, you know, uh, Utah or something like that. That's true. You know? Because I'm going to say the South is winning like this. Because when you think about the South, you think about... Like you said, from Texas to North Carolina to Atlanta, you know, that's a but that's like a continent. That's like what, 14 fucking states? Population, what? 20 fucking, I don't know, oh, millions upon millions upon millions upon millions of motherfuckers that's clicked up. Yeah. You don't really say one state. You say all oh, them niggas is from the South. south. <laughs> exactly. Man, exactly. But you know, Atlanta's just a hub though. You feel me? Yeah. Just like you would think. Like us, us West Coast people, they'll be like, oh, LA is the hub. But it's like, nah, it could be somewhere else. You just have to realize that, like, you know, 99, 2000, you weren't thinking Atlanta's gonna be the hub of hip hop music. You're thinking somewhere, if you had to say South, you're probably what, gonna say Texas, probably. Like at that time, at that point. What, what year? Uh, like around 2099, like right before the turn of the millennium. Cause I feel like that's when Atlanta started to pretty much take hip hop and it's staying. Well, down you there. know what? Would you know what? I almost agree with that. I kind of disagree because I'm still leaning because in 99, the hot boys were still hot. That's the South. Yeah, but you said Atlanta. They from Louisiana. But I'm saying, I'm saying, oh, yeah. but like, I'm saying like the South. And, but then of course, Atlanta yeah. didn't. I say Atlanta took it over around like 2006, 2007. Yeah. Like that's when they had like every single summer, every single song was Atlanta. But yeah, as far yeah, as yeah. the South goes, it was like 99, you know, 2000, like where it was like started to like, it definitely the Texans. But I'm saying at that point, where were you? Where would you think the hip hop mecca in the South would have been at that point? Yeah, like would you say Atlanta still, or would you say like a Texas, or would you say Louisiana? What I would say Louisiana, just because they was coming off the Master P. Master P was still Richmond, California, but Louisiana. Yeah. And then when Juvenile caught that huh shit, then the four hundred degrees, then the Hot Boys, then they start releasing old shit. I mean, them niggas didn't stop being collectively mm -hmm. running shit, but then something special happened, and I do agree with you. In Atlanta, in Atlanta yeah. Ludacris happened. When mm. Ludacris came and broke the ice, that nigga was like a one-man army and just started running shit. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. That lick, 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 lick me from your head to mm-hmm. your toe when I'm a... When that shit came, they was like, who was it? Because he kind of reminded me of Red Man, mm-hmm. but commercial. Because Red Man is not commercial. Red Man is an underground nigga that yeah. you might could go see in the damn bathroom and that nigga gonna be rocking the house. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Certain niggas is just like that. But Ludacris definitely had that it factor. He was silly, he was cool, and he could rap his ass off. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And when you show up to his shows, guess what? You don't have to worry about getting shot. Man, <laughs> man, he putting on a show. Yeah. You feel me? He putting on a show. Because, like, yep, you're right. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, because that I think Crunk was just about to happen. Yeah, like, because that was like 03. Yeah. You know, for, so yeah. 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 Like, you feel me? And the reason why I say Atlanta it also, it, because even though you did have the Hot Boys and you did have Master P, but right before that, a little bit before that, you had Outkast. That's right. You feel me? So, and Outkast, they let it be known the South has something to say. You feel me? And they said that shit. Shout out to my nigga Drake. You feel me? So you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I that's why I put Atlanta and that's why I feel like it became the hub. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because it was like, well shit, y'all, y'all was the first ones to plant the the, the, uh, the flag yeah. and say, yo, this is what it, and they didn't just say Atlanta. It was yeah. like, no, nah, the whole South. Yeah. So yeah. So but, so I gotta ask you a throwback question. Let's get it. When you think about underrated MCs, right? Mm-hmm. Do you look at big boy as being underrated? Absolutely. And it's crazy to me because that man be spitting. Yeah. Like, I feel like if you think Andre 3000 is that way, like, if you think he's your top five, top ten, then, it like, you don't think this man was rapping with this man and had respect for this man and this man doesn't have no bars or nothing? Like, come on now. You, yeah. You didn't listen to no damn Outkast. Like, yeah. you feel me? Like, hell no. Like, yeah. you can't you can't tell me you listened to Outkast album and didn't rap a big boy verse or – Sat there and thought about some shit he said because he used to say some shit and yeah. he's like, "Wait a minute, hold on, wait, run that back." You feel me? He was slick. He slick with the tongue too. You yeah, feel me? like you know what I'm saying, like just like Andre. So I don't understand why he doesn't. I understand the group aspect. You know, everybody going to pick their favorite or whatever, whatever the case may be. But I feel like with them, it's like, nah, that's outcast. Like, yeah, definitely. Like, <laughs> I definitely. I don't really think he's underrated. I think he's probably just overshadowed. Mm. Okay. You know, it's a slight different. Underrated mean that you don't get the props you get, but he definitely get the props he get. But I just think that Dre is just Man. that plus some. Yeah. You know, because he could do it. Like, he experiments with shit. Yeah. It's kind of funny that if you ask somebody, like, who their favorite dressers was and uh, uh, people that dress in mm-hmm. hip-hop, somebody might say Dre, but he might not necessarily wear Gucci and this and fa- fancy, yeah. but he's fashionable. Yeah, no, most definitely. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Like, he was the first artist, like, rapper that was, like, fashion. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, as far as, like, oh, what the hell is he wearing? Yeah, yeah. And not on, like, just a video. Like, you know, most cats, you know, get dressed up in videos. But this cat, MTV Awards, rocking the runway. Like, this cat is literally still in the same outfits, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So, yeah, nah. Whoever don't think he he's, whoever say he's not fashionable, they need to be shot. Yeah, but, uh, yeah <laughs> for me? sure. But man used to wear a turban, man. Come on, man. <laughs> no shirt on with some with some high waist pants, some like space pants. Like, come on, bro. Yeah. Come on. Bombs over Baghdad. Yeah. He had the, the, the flip out. Yeah. Come on, man. Come on. Bro. That shit was crazy. <laughs> he was cold. He was cold. And he, he ain't scared. Yeah. You know I mean, and that's that's what hip hop is about, not being scared. Yeah. You know I mean, yeah. doing you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So. And yeah. he's also one of them MCs that uh, certain MCs don't kind of they really don't feel like they from where they from. <laughs> like I don't get New York out of Fifty Cent though. He kind of come off as a West Coast artist to me. His music does, but not. I don't, I don't think it's like personality. Yeah, like I, he still gives me that New York vibe. Really? Yeah, he still gives me that. New York. Well, you know what? Because like when I'm listening to motherfuckers from Queens, yeah. I get Queens. Like when I'm listening to Mob Deep. True. True. When true. I'm listening to Mob Deep, as soon as I put it in, it feel like the projects is just coming <laughs> off the motherfucking ground and shit like that. When I'm listening to Nas, the same thing. When I'm listening to that LL he, Cool J. Uh, I get something different out of LL Cool J. Okay, but he from Queens, though. I get something different out of LL Cool J. Okay, all right, I'm just saying. You can't just be over here throwing because out. Because LL Cool J is, <laughs> yeah, LL Cool J is before Gangsta Rap. Bro. I know, he is, he yeah. is the, the, the son of rap there, man. You feel me? Because he was, you know. Yeah. The be, prince of rap. Yeah. yeah, back so. in the day, right, they used to have prototypical groups. That's some shit I made <laughs> up. Run DMC, right? Yeah, yeah. It's three of them. Well... The Fat Boys was the fat version of Run DMC. 
Beastie Boys was, was the, the white, white version of Run DMC, yeah. and LL Cool J was Run DMC if there was a young one nigga. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that I mean, the, that's why Def Jam <laughs> signed all them cats at the same For time. For sure, feel me like around the same time. So yeah, that makes sense. Have that you sense. have you ever wanted to stop doing this rap shit? Um, shit, <laughs> not not like really, but like I damn near have said it and was like, but I ain't like. It's kind of like when I used to like quit football, like you know, you quit like a sport, and your coach be like. I see you tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. You'll be back tomorrow. Yeah. You know, so that's kind of how it is. But like, that's when I'm just frustrated when I'm trying to write, you know what I'm saying? Or like, I'm trying to figure out, you know, a, a scheme or something. Like, nothing to where it's like, uh, some somebody said something that hurt yeah. my feelings. Yeah. Like, hell no. Like, I just be like, I be in my own mind. Yeah. I can't get this word or I can't get this line together. Fuck it. Hey, since you and Sue made up, have y'all did any record together? Uh, we working on one. We Dope. Work, yeah, yeah, we're working on one. Uh, Cause you know, he he don't he don't live in the Bay. So yeah. you know, we gotta do the email thing. So uh, yeah, we're working on Dope. Yeah, so hopefully it's not just one, hopefully it's more, you feel me? Cause I know people, you know, the the true fans, you feel me? Not the, the people that was acting like haters that was trying to like cheer, you know, while, uh, while that shit was going on. You know, yeah. the real people that was like trying to uh, patch shit up. I know they're gonna be happy to hear that shit. For know? sure. So yeah, that's why I, I, I'm i actually excited for that shit, but I got my own shit popping. You yeah. Know? I got my own new music coming out this year. But I know that's going to get a lot of people excited, though, for sure. What are you actually working on now? What is it called? Uh, I'm working on, like, a few projects. I'm working on a, a compilation project. I'm working on a collab project. I can't even tell you the artist yet, man. We're trying to keep it a secret. I'm going to tell you off air, though. Okay, I okay. I can't tell you on air, though. Okay, you know okay. I mean? It's that top secret. Hey, I feel me? like a mob to watch this. You feel me? Whatever you do, kid, bring him to fame. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do, bring him to Fang Media. Yeah, yeah, nah, nah, that, nah. Of course, man, we're gonna definitely double that back one time. But uh, nah, I'm just working on these three projects. I'm probably gonna drop more, but like, I don't even have a title. But it's gonna be coming out in March, though, for sure. So when you're actually writing a song with the intent on blowing some shit up, you know what I'm saying, tearing some shit up, because that's what we all want to do. Yeah, yeah. Do you ever be feeling like, man, this this ain't better than that song? So I'm nah, fuck it. Do you ever have the pressure of coming down from up? Uh, <laughs> I like how you said that. Uh, nah, like, shit, it's been so damn long. Shit, I was like, I'd be like, shit, it's a good song. Like, you feel yeah. me? It's kind of like, um, I used to look at it as a mountain. Now I just look at it as, as a championship ring sitting in, in on the banister. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. going out to get another one. Yeah, I got to stop looking at things as a mountain. Because it never was a mountain when I was climbing it in the first place. Like, it was just a little mini hill. I was enjoying it. Yeah, feel me? so I gotta get back to enjoying it. So every time I go into doing the record, it's all about enjoying that moment, that record, whatever's going on. Never bringing old shit. Yeah. <laughs> like kind of like a, this is my new girlfriend. Every time I do a new record, this is my new girl. Yeah, I'm bringing up my old girl, man. God damn, like yeah, she yeah. Start tripping. Yeah, so, definitely. You feel me? So that's how that's how I take it. You feel me? <laughs> yeah, no, definitely, definitely, definitely. <laughs> I'm fucking with that. <laughs> you feel me? So, you know, that's how I, that's how I walk into every situation. You feel me? Or every song, like you know. And I feel like nothing can be better than what I'm putting forth right now. That's right, right. Now, in this moment. So yeah, so that's what I'm focused on. Never. I know it's a I know it's a record. I know it's a hit. I know everybody yeah. be like, that's that was a, I know. I know. Trust me. I could do it again though. So your mom goes to church, right? Yeah. Was she very proud of the record? Yeah. She was hella proud. Okay. Hella proud. <laughs> like, like you feel me? Like hella proud. Like you feel me? But like, you know, I, I didn't tell her about the record. Like the record was blowing up. Yeah. You know I mean? And of course my my name is Love Rance. And of course, you know, if anybody knows me, they be like, oh, there's only one Rance I know. Yeah. So it's kind of like it's not. How hard. did she find out? Uh, <laughs> shit. Uh, <laughs> a lady at our church. <laughs> Actually, a lady at our church. Because the lady at our church has kids, and of course, the kids was playing the record. And then she was like, "Wait a minute, <laughs> love rants." And then of course, she seen the picture. Was like, "That's Wanda's son." So, <laughs> so boom, got, got the church. <laughs> da, 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 da. Moms. Did she, they say we need to talk to you, Mister? <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, but the pastor, he pulled up on me, though. Yeah. He pulled up on me in, uh, in his little fly jag. You know, he pulled up, let me holler at you, man. You know what I'm saying? If you, you know what I'm saying? I haven't seen you in a few Sundays, but you know what I'm saying? If you need if you need anything, just let me know. I'm like, what? What am I going to ask the pastor? Like, it sounded to me like rubbers. <laughs> <laughs> Look here, player. Yeah. I know you've been looking at us, uh, Sister Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> nah, but yeah, it was it was just it, I always found it funny though. Like you feel me? Like, cause like I was like, you know, I'm talking about my life. I'm just living my life. Like I'm living my truth. So when people would come and holler at me about it, I'm like, I'm glad you heard it. Like yeah. that means it was it was kind of like a, ah, but you heard it though. Like you yeah. feel me? So it's getting somewhere. So yeah. it was like a gift and a curse, you know. But you gotta, you know, roll with the punches. I didn't what, kill. I didn't kill nobody. So. What is your? <laughs> but you killed the pussy. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Damn. <laughs> what is your biggest regret that you would like if you could change one thing about your career or something that you wish that you actually had done, what would that one thing be? Mm, probably get a Kendrick Lamar feature. You had a chance? No, I never had a chance, but we were around each other a lot because of the interscope, um the interscope connection. So a lot of shows I would do, he would be doing the same show. Mm -hmm. So we'd do it like a car show in like Texas or like a, a little like summer jam. Or not summer jam, but like something, I don't want to say less than a summer jam, but like a different type of event than a summer jam. But like we'll be at multiple events together. We actually chopped it up a few times, but like it was never, let me holler at him about music. It was just chopping it up. Like just, you know. It's funny though, cause you kind of fit in with them. TD? Yeah. Shit, I mean, I'm looking for a click right now. <laughs> yeah, like when I think of them artists or something like that, you kind of fit in with them. You kind of got that uh, that different world, college vibe, uh, radio <laughs> station job, but be rapping at night. Look, you, <laughs> you know? know. But I feel like I can I can fit in anybody group though. Yeah, like, that. like you feel me? That's why I feel like I'm 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 one of those good like good players. Like if you pick me up, if the team pick me up, everybody yeah. go like, oh wait a minute, they got him too. Like. Yeah. You know, so I guess that that's just because the vibe I bring and what I talk about yeah. and my subject matter is not like, even if I hop on a record, I'm not going to talk about the same shit that nigga going to talk about, this nigga going to talk about. Yeah. Like, I'm my own, like you said, I'm in my own world, in my own lane, so. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Appreciate that, though. I appreciate that. Like, I would love to be in TD. For sure. Top dog, call me. <laughs> so before we get out of here, is there any props you want to give to anybody? Um, Shoot, myself. Me, myself, and I. Nah, fan. Uh, everybody, man. I appreciate everybody, whoever listening, whoever's watching. I appreciate you for having me, of course. For sure. Um, you know, I just appreciate being here alive. You know, you know, we're going through crazy times right now, so I'm just happy to be alive, brother. I'm for happy that my people's is in good health, and, you know, that's all I can be thankful for right now. You for sure. And where can people find your shit at? Man, they can find me everywhere. Apple Music, Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, nigga, uh, Love Rants, L O V E R A N C E, Love Rants, you dig? Is that you on Instagram too? Yes, sir. Well, I don't be answering all the damn time. People be sending me messages. You didn't message me back in three days, bro. Yeah. I don't be on this shit like that, but I, I'm on there. So yeah. That's me. Yeah. But don't be hitting me up and think I'm about to just hit you back. Yeah. Like, I'll be like, I, you know, I gotta just you gotta disconnect from that shit sometimes. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But I'll be on there. Well, thanks for coming out, G. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you. For sure. Hell for yeah. sure. And I am LD, also known Lawrence One, for another episode of I Need to Know. And as usual, come on, you know what I want. <laughs> <laughs>